Inside the Birds is back. What's up, everybody? Jeff Mosher alongside Adam Kaplan as we actually have an Eagles preseason game. Eagles are going to have their preseason opener against the Steelers Thursday night. So for a lot of you, they'll, you'll be listening in the morning of the game. We're going to go through that. And uh, some of you are just listening to hear what we've got to say about the Eagles after about 10 days of practice. Uh, not everybody practicing, a couple of veteran days off. So we'll go through what we've heard since our last podcast, and we'll really preview the game. And also, some really interesting nuggets came out of Q&A, Adam, that we'll go through real quick, too. Uh, some stuff that even I didn't know that, that I found pretty fascinating, and we'll get into that. Uh, how are you doing out there? You're uh, in Chicago uh, as, as we record this, correct? Yeah, so it's Thursday morning. I'm going to practice in a couple hours. Dolphins at the Bears here in Lake Forest. Nice. Illinois. Uh, yeah, so looking forward to seeing that. I, the, the, I'm big, as I've, I've said many times, on these combined practices, these joint practices as coaches talk, talk about. And uh, look, this is what Nick Sirianni talked about in his uh, press conference earlier this week, that you know you don't have to play. What he meant, I'm, I'm deciphering what he said, is you don't have to play the veterans much in the preseason. Mm -hmm. You've got two sets of joint practices. Uh, next week, I'll be there uh, with the Patriots coming in Monday and Tuesday and then the game Thursday. Then the following week at the Jets. So, right, right. yeah, wh why do you need to play the veterans a lot? In fact, I've heard other coaches say this over the years that um, they almost, in a way, treat them like preseason games, the joint practices in terms of getting snaps. So you really you, – and, and remember now, only three preseason games for 30 of the 32 teams. Yeah, it's, it really calls into question, and we'll get into it as the podcast goes, is how coaches treat the third preseason game – this year is it like the fourth one where starters don't play or because Nick <laughs> yeah. Sirianni was asked about what his plan was for all of his players and he really gave the standard coach answer which is oh these are conversations we're discussing I mean never, other than saying that starters will play Thursday night against the Steelers he did not really he didn't say how much he didn't say how much they play in the second game or the third he didn't say if he was treating the third like the fourth so there's a lot of uncertainty going on right now with how the preseason is going to go. And I don't know that every team is going to treat it the same. You would think that teams with like the Eagles, uh, maybe the Jets, as you mentioned, who have quarterbacks that need work and the need to see other defenses will probably get more preseason reps than say a team like the Steelers, where you don't even know if Ben Roethlisberger is going to play very much, if at all. Right, right. So I think it does come down to those joint practices. The, again, those, those are extra, extra reps. Uh, and look, the thing – about the the big thing about the preseason games is they may be the only time that these players get tackled because the Eagles have not tackled at all. Uh, they, they're they not taking anyone to the ground uh, from what I understand. So right. um, like Doug Peterson would, as you know, but the peer, the hitting periods were short, but he would want to do it. Um, then the Steelers, as you said, we don't know how much their veterans are going to play. Now they've got They've got a major offensive line problem, so this is this is a good thing for the Eagles' defense. We'll, we'll, we'll talk with the defense in a couple of minutes, but yeah, um, you know we're we're less than ten hours here from uh, the preseason tonight, and um, I'm looking forward to getting it going. And then and then again, this is the Steelers' second preseason game of four, so we'll see how much their starters play. All right, and based on what you just said, I, and even though Nick Sirianni has not come out specifically and said it, it's hard to think that he's going to do any live tackling to the ground in camp because right after this preseason game, they're going to have a couple of, you know, two weeks of joint practices first with the Patriots. They're going to have with the Jets. You know, they're not going to be tackling to the ground against an opponent. So if they hadn't done it in preparation for the first preseason game, I don't think they're going to do it at all. And so I don't think you're going to see, I think you hit it on the head. You are not going to see live tackling to the ground involving the Eagles unless it's a preseason game. And it's funny John Harbaugh would do it in combined practices. <laughs> they yeah. run the hardest and longest camps. I mean, well, where, where, which, what tree does John Harbaugh come from? And that answers your question, right? Andy Reid, sure. There you Andy go. The hard, they would by hit. The way, some some right. really good stories from Q and A. Uh, I'll share a really funny one. You can get the full story by by checking out the show. But Jason Avant was talking about his first preseason game. And he remembered, I don't know, it was, yeah, it was, I think it was his first one. He caught three straight passes in a row to get the team from deep in their own territory to the other team's territory. I think he said it was against the Steelers. And mm. he took himself out. He was winded. The, the, he said the third, <laughs> third catch was a 25-yarder down the right seam. So he took himself out, catches, catches breath. 
Big Red went over to him and chewed him out like you wouldn't believe. They say college. Apparently, you don't get just to take yourself out of a game <laughs> oh, because you're winded. <laughs> oh, he took himself out. Oh, jeez. Yeah, he took. He, you know how you know players sometimes give the like the yeah yeah oh yeah they, that sign, tap like, the helmet yeah, or yeah tap of the helmet yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. usually <laughs> you do that when you're hurt or wait, or even in a game you'll see guys can can get a sub but not in a preseason sure. game not when you're a rookie. So good stuff in the in the in the Q and A show. By the way, they had a lot of flashbacks of kevin cobb which was a good discussion because this is you know cobb was a second round pick he was he was drafted to replace donovan yep. um, probably sooner than later but donovan had that great run in 2008 but then he was the man he took all the first team reps um obviously you know after a game and the concussion and the michael vick thing different situation but somewhat similar in that jalen hurts is now being thrust into the spotlight has control of the team and everybody's kind of watching and waiting to see him take the reins like they were doing with Kevin back then. It, it's it's so interesting because when they drafted Cobb, you're absolutely right. He 100%, although he was a second-round pick, right, was drafted to be the guy. And then whereas Hertz was not drafted to be the guy in any way, shape, or form, and it's the, it's could been completely flipped. It's really it's amazing you, you bring that up. And and, and here's the, the value of preseason. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget. I've told this story before. It's probably been like two or three years. But um, it was a Kansas City preseason game. They were at Kansas City. And it may have been coming out of lockout. I don't remember. It was either 10 or 11, and lockout was 11. He was so bad. He kept rolling out to his right mm-hmm. for absolutely no reason. I'm like, what, what is he? I, I know for a fact that I just remember that th- this was not part of the game plan. <laughs> so I, I asked someone in their front office, I said, hey, can you explain what's going on? He goes, I can't. He goes, this is not good. This person I spoke with. Right. And it wasn't. It was. It was the beginning of the end for Cobb. It might have actually been that game that that was the first time I'd seen it. Now, though I, you know, I wasn't every at every camp practice, but I take this stuff seriously. If I see some bad habits from a, a quarterback, I'm mm-hmm. going to make a mental note of it, and I'm going to ask, you know, did I did what I see is correct? Is, is this correct? And if it is, you know, like in this game, right now we right. understand that the Steelers run a 34 defense. I understand Sirianni talked about it. You're going to be vanilla. You're not going to mm-hmm. show very much, but. They do run a defense that uh, they haven't seen, and um, I'll be interested to see how Hurts uh, handles it all. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a fascinating look. And, and really, again, how much he plays is kind of the right. unknown right now and and look forward to finding out and seeing what they do. Uh, all right, so make sure you're also checking out Q&A for some really good flashbacks of their own preseason memories. Uh, and also look for InsideTheBirds.com. Andrew DiCecco has a story, Eight Eagles to Watch in this preseason oh, nice. game. They're not all eight obvious guys, not all first teamers. Some guys were really fighting to make the team. So check that out from Andrew DeCecco on InsideTheBirds.com. I'll be at the game. So, uh, you know, follow me on Twitter at Jeff Moshe. Oh, and, oh boy. Uh, yeah, it'll be good. Live I'll, be, tr- I'll do some live tweeting. Live <laughs> tweeting. Just going to say, oh boy. All right. I'll, 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 I don't, have, I don't I'll be crazy glued. anymore. I used to, you know, back in the day, I used to like tweet everything and yeah. it's just not necessary. Yeah. Now I just, yeah. you know, some really important, some observations here and there, but I'll have something, uh, from after the game on InsideTheBirds.com. Is uh, is the game nationally – we, we know it's on locally. Is it on – because there's only two games on tonight. So is it is it on like ESPN or CBS or one of those? Uh, it's a good question. I don't remember. I will check actually. as we yeah, speak. You, you check that and I will remind our uh, listeners to download the Deal Dash app, right? Or just go to DealDash.com. And when you register, use the promo code ITB for a special offer for some bonus free bids. That's right. You get bonus free bids using the promo code ITB when you download that Deal Dash app or just go to DealDash.com. All right. Did you uh, – were you able to research it there? Yeah. Yeah, it's on national TV. But, of course, it, how, how do they even say this? It says live on ABC and NBC. Come on. That, that can't be right. <laughs> what? That's ridiculous. I know. Don't don't ask. I don't know. Well, it's going to be NBC locally, right? Because they have the rights for preseason games in Philly, but maybe yeah, ABC elsewhere or is it ABC Radio? I don't know. That's no, no. It, it definitely is on nationally one of the one of the networks. So yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'll be able to see it. And uh, what I'll do is I like it. Generally, what I do is kind of like Jeff said. I don't feel the need to to put 50 posts up there. I used to like Jeff did, but mm-hmm. I think at some point it's like. Everyone's watching it, so right. I'll put it where I think there's there's something we learned, or some some something that's noticeable. And then you know the other thing is with the lineups, we'll, we'll get into this in a second. I'm just interested to see who they're actually going to line up and play. We we we'll go over the injury report in a minute, but I I, I just don't know. As Jeff's saying, like 
we just don't know because there's only three preseason games what he's going to do, but uh, Sirianni. But th- look, this is his first game. Here we go. This is his first game as, as head coach. A lot to watch. First game for Jonathan Gannon as defensive coordinator, right. too. Um, so there were a couple of um, transactions that we'll talk about really quickly. First, uh, <laughs> man, it's amazing how quickly things can happen. My, uh, Michael Walker, the wide receiver that they brought in from the Jags, made the best catch on the first day of practice. Remember I told you, I mean, he caught the ball in the end zone, took a hit, held on, fell into the goalpost, fell down, still held on to the ball, made a few other catches that day and the next day. And at that point, you know, Quez Watkins was had, had not come back to camp yet. And Jalen Rager had had the conditioning test issues. And we were saying, you know, hey, the fifth spot, you know, it's it's open. You know, it's, there's like J.J. Ortega Whiteside and Quez and John Hightower and all that. And then the kid got hurt, Kevin. Kevin, uh, I mean Michael Walker, and then that was that was a wrap for him. He came back to one practice, got hurt again, and now he's been waived uh, with an injury settlement. So, and then they no, go no settlement. No, he's on no, IR. No, no, I'm sorry, just waived injured. Right. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and, and it's so fun. I was I saw your tweet. They they they're running it back with Mark and Michelle, <laughs> third third or fourth time. Well, well, I mean, and of course, Blake Countess, they sign and get, uh, they, you know, they wave injured Obi Mill and Fonwu. So whenever you sign Blake Countess and Mark and Mike, Mike is it Michelle or Michael? Michelle. Michelle. No, it's Mark and Michelle. It's right. Sonny's he's, brother. he's Sonny Michelle's uh, brother, right? Yep. Yep. Older brother, if I'm not mistaken. So Correct. Yep. Yeah. So I jokingly on Twitter, you know, I tweeted at uh, Julian Vanderveld, who's been, you know, an <laughs> eagle about 912 times in his career. <laughs> uh, that to get ready, stay by the phone call. And he actually tweeted back that he was ready. He's a little meme of hit, uh, somebody by a phone. So you never know. Julian Vanderbilt could be bought back. There's been, there's nobody who's been signed and released by the Eagles more than Vanderbilt. Correct. Is there anyone else that you can think of? I, I don't know if we play the, what I call the roster tango, which means well, what it typically means is like you, you, you sign a guy, you cut, you let him get through waivers, and you put him in your practice squad. Then you bring right. him, you call him up. Like Greg Ward went through it uh, four years ago, three years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, it could, Michelle, this is technically his third time right. uh, with the Eagles. But, it, yeah, it's – boy, he's 28. Holy smokes. Wow. How about that? Yeah. Still hanging on there. Yep. yep. All right. And, of course, Blake Countess. You know, we talked about this, Adam. Another there, guy. <laughs> and, you know, we were talking about the difficulty – of the safety position with depth about for the regular season. But here we already are. I mean, no Rodney McLeod because he's still rehabbing. And then they lose Kevon Wallace, who's week to week. So now you're looking at it, and it's Marcus Epps and Anthony Harris as first teamers. And then your next guy up is, you know, Elijah Riley, I guess, unless I'm forgetting somebody. So that's that's razor thin right there at safety, which obviously uh, is why Blake Countess is back in camp. Correct. Yeah. So this is Countess's fourth time with the Eagles, drafted oh. of that 16 class. Um, yeah. Wow. I mean, it's really right now. It's in, in Harrison Wallace. Kevon Wallace, unfortunately, is going to be out for a bit. He's got an injury. Epps, a- Andrew Adams, Graylon Arnold is hurt, so he can't play. Elijah Riley, as you mentioned, Rodney McLeod's not available. He's on PUP. And Blake Countess, boy. Ooh, they don't have. Jeez. The, the, it's interesting. So I, I don't know. I mean, will they play Harris? I, I would imagine not, but I don't know that. Uh, to That's be honest, I haven't, I haven't asked. So That's it, a good they, point. Will they're they down. To, yeah, they're down in numbers, man. Ooh, it's not good. They are. No doubt. No doubt about it. You know, if you were to, I think if you were to ask us what two players on defense can least afford to have injuries in training camp, we would have probably said Davion Taylor and Kevon Wallace, just because we knew how important you know, they were drafted last year. They didn't get on the field much. They needed to improve. They play positions where the Eagles aren't exactly teaming with a lot of young talent. So you really wanted those guys to kind of come into their own here in year two. And obviously with both of them out week to week now, it's not easy. Not not good for them. Not good for them. No. And then, of course, Adam, left tackle, Andre Dillard. Oh, I mean, we already know that Alana was running away with it. But for him yeah. to be week to week is disastrous as well for him. All right, so with the injuries you got, Diller now week to week with a sprained knee. I, I was not even aware of this, um, which means it's a minimum of an MCL sprain. Hopefully it's not worse than that. Uh, you mentioned Kev- Kevon Wallace with a groin strain. He's week to week. Devontae Smith is ru- – I guess he was seen running, um, jogging or running on the side. That's good. You know, it's, he, he, had a, he had a grade one MCL, I believe, so that's why he's running. 
Right. Um, John Hightower with a groin. Uh, Dave on ta- Davion Taylor with his second injury. This is the calf. He had the quadriceps before that. He's week to week. And Jacoby Stevens is the guy that we we had heard he was starting to do well, and then he has a hamstring injury, yeah. which he's week to week. So not good. We needed to see him in the preseason. I agree. I think it really, you know, you want the rookies and the year two players to get as much preseason training camp time as possible. And it really stinks to have Devontae, Stevens, Wallace, and Taylor out right now. I mean, really, and, and it's tough for Hightower. More, more, more difficult for him because he's fighting to make the 53. But mm-hmm. overall, when you have Devontae and Hightower out, that obviously hurts your your wide receiver depth and, and um, your position. And I'm not sure how much Jalen Ray, we'll get into that, see how much he plays because he was kind of slow to begin with at the start of camp. Um, Brandon Brooks and Isaac Sayamalu, they're, they're back to being limited, so they're not week-to-week or That's day-to-day good. anymore. But I don't know that you're going to see them. No. On Thursday night against the Steelers, I don't think there's any reason to have him play. No. Landon Tonight, Dickerson no. is still, you know, inactive uh, or on the active NFI list, and as we mentioned, McLeod and of course uh, Laraven Clark are still on PUP, so we will not be seeing them. All right, let's get into the the game preview. Um, let me ask you just this: if you were if you were the coach, if you were Nick Sirianni, how much would you play the court each quarterback tonight or uh, Thursday night? So tonight, the, he, and it's interesting because he was asked by Ruben Frank, our friend mm-hmm. uh, from NBC Sports Philly, and it was a fair question, and, and I understand Sirianna's answer. Like, he has a plan, but let's say he says – let's just say he says one quarter. I, I personally would think it would be one quarter, mm-hmm. first game. And Ruben asked a good follow-up. He's like you – know, and then what, what Sirianna said I, I thought was fair because he you don't want to pitch at home. Let's say he was going to play him a quarter, right? Mm-hmm. And this is where this is where Ruben said, "Yeah, but what if he has a great first series? You need to play more." And he go, and that's where Nick said, "Listen, that's the issue. I don't want to be pinned down to how much you, I say he's going to play, and then when he doesn't play, you question him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, it, it's a give and take, and that's really the way coaches typically do it. If they see what they need to see, they pull the guy out. Now, now the funny thing is, Bill Belichick for he did it a lot. He would play the the vet the, if the starters were not having if he was not happy with practice that week or they weren't doing well. He would play his starters quite a bit in the fourth preseason game, like a half, where most teams don't play them, as you know. So it and and, and it's gonna be fascinating to see, as we said earlier, how Sirianni and the coaches use the three preseason games versus the two joint practices. Now he combines the two in terms of snaps in the, in this in, in what you call the preseason in August. Mm-hmm. Um, quite frankly, they're like mini preseason games, these joint practices. So I I'm it's it, it. I'll tell you what. It's um, something I I haven't. We haven't really talked about this over the years. I, I can't remember. Did they um? Did they have any joint practices last year, Peterson? I don't, no, I don't, they couldn't because of COVID. COVID. They weren't doing. No, yeah, they couldn't. No, no. Right. They did two right, years right. ago. You know, they did. They used to. Okay. Yeah. I'm, obviously, the year they won the Super Bowl, they had them with Miami. Oh yeah, I was. I was there. Yeah, it's the JGI sighting, and they claim that that was part of it. So sure. all right, I got it. So I would I would agree with you. I would play Jalen Hurts a quarter, right? Now it doesn't mm-hmm. it depends on how it works out. If if the Steelers get the ball first, they take a few minutes off the clock, then the Eagles get the ball, right? And Jalen Hurts then goes on a 13 play drive. Okay, that ends in either a t- whatever it ends in. I don't care. Field goal, touchdown, interception, turnover, fumble, whatever. Who cares? If it's a 13 play, you know, 6 7 minute drive, Okay, and then the Steelers get the ball back, and then there's only like 30, 45 seconds left in the quarter when the Eagles get the ball back, then I don't think you need to have Jalen Hurts out there just for the last, you know, for another drive. But anything else, I would put him out there for as much of the first quarter as possible. If he throws an 80-yard touchdown on the first drive and it's only a minute and a half, I'm putting him back out there again. If he goes three and out on the on the first drive or the first two drives, he's going back out there again. I just you you want to see at least a quarter's worth of, in my opinion, of action from Jalen Hurts. Well, I and I, I agree. In fact, I want to see him get work with Quez Watkins. Okay, we'll do an offensive overview right now. Mm-hmm. I want him to get work with Rager. has got to play, and he's got to play at least a quarter. Uh, yeah, they need I don't to know grind if you're him. Get that because of his slow start. I, you know, well, I, I, I got to grind him. If it was more than two. I, I agree with you, but I'd be surprised if he got more than than two possessions. Which may be a quarter. We'll see. I I would. I mean, he needs to play. Watkins needs to play. The guys who need work on offense, uh, skill position wise, 
Um, Kenny Ganwell, mm -hmm. Jason, Jason Huntley is a major long shot to make the team. He's done some nice things in terms of explosion. I want to see carry on Johnson. We know he can protect. We want to see him run the football because he needs work. Carry on Johnson needs work. He didn't get a lot. Uh, he didn't look particularly good in the, their off season program, but he had just gotten there. Mm -hmm. But now he's getting rounding out into shape. So you want to see him game well, obviously. I'd like to see him run it because he's caught, you know, he's caught the ball a lot. Um, Watkins, as I said, we need to see him. And we need to see number 19, not Greg Luzinski, JJ <laughs> Ortega Whiteside. Yeah, I'm sure we're going to see. I mean, with the way the wide receiver position is looking right now, I think you're going to see a lot of JJ Ortega Whiteside, a lot of Quez Watkins, and a lot of Greg Ward because those are the three healthiest guys. At the moment, so you'll and then once the first quarter is over, they'll get into the, uh, I guess the Mark and Michael Michelles and uh, and um, uh, the guy who just moved over from tight end, uh, Hakeem, Hakeem Butler, Hakeem yeah. Butler, and and you'll get some other guys there. But I do think you'll see a lot of uh, of, of JJ Ortega Whiteside. Good chance, hey, perfect chance for him to show uh, showcase um, his development from you know after two disappointing years. The question I have, or that I wonder is Miles Sanders. To me, I don't think you need to see Miles Sanders pass one drive. I, you'd like to get him work with Jalen Hurts. I do. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. But this is your only three-down running back. He's the guy that you already – look, the only thing you don't know about him is whether or not he's going to improve on those passes across the middle. You can work on that a whole lot. You don't need the preseason game. I wouldn't play him more than one possession because I want to get Jordan Howard in there and, and get him some reps at the end of the first quarter okay. too. Don't you think that makes sense? Yeah, I don't know that Jordan Howard needs it. Um, I, I should have mentioned Elijah Holifield. He he also not that he's going to make it, but mm -hmm. uh, if you're not, as you said, if you're not going to play Miles Sanders much. And by the way, the the, the one area where and you're talking about him catching the football, I I don't know this. This is just me speculating a little bit. But if he continues to drop passes and 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 have issues with the just the routine catches, you know the three areas where running backs must excel. You know, catching the football, mm -hmm. or, or 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 just in terms of what kind of roles are up in the air, uh, for all thirty-two teams, there's the hurry up, which is two minutes, uh, or if, you know if you're behind in the game, there's third down, uh, in all those passing situations, and then there's um, what well, well yeah, hurry up is hurry up. Quite frankly, it's just that hurry up doesn't always have to mean that you're down, um, but it th th it's those three. It's if you're down in the game. Who's that back? Okay. Hurry up, which is when you're late in the game, two minutes in each half. Mm -hmm. And obvious passing situations. And I'll tell you what, it wouldn't shock me at all if Boston Scott cuts in him in that role because he's sure-handed. He's got good short area quickness. He's not explosive as Sanders. We all know that. That's a given. Right. But Kenny Gainwell also was drafted to do some of that. Sanders has got to do better in that area. I thought I think you called fair. it really well on that show. His yeah, hands no. – a routine passes. He just drops the ball. He's trying to get upfield. Secure the ball first. That's your job. He doesn't have. He has. He doesn't have soft hands like Boston Scott. I mean, you can like we said in the past pod. I was watching them take take catching passes from the jugs machine side by side, and Miles. You know, the ball kind of rattles around in there, even when he catches it. And Boston's just so soft. It's like he's plucking feathers out of the air. Just naturally gifted in that way. So I agree with you that if Miles were to continue to struggle in that department, they would have to look to on third down or on passing downs. They would have to look to to Scott and Gainwell for that. But I mean, man, we, we saw what Miles can do two years ago catching the football. And so I know he does work hard after practice and before practice at trying to catch the ball. So he's putting the work in. Hopefully that translates well and and he um, moves on. You, you don't think. The, you don't think J uh, Jordan Howard will get a, a decent amount of reps? That's a tough call. The the guys that I, I let me add a couple names. I, I don't. I'm not sure about Jordan Howard if he needs the work because he's done. He's looked really good in, in training camp from what we're told. Yeah. Uh, Tyree Jackson. How could I forget about to talk about him? Oh, this yeah, is it definitely. now, Jeff. This is it. Let's see how you do when you get tackled and you get right. hit. Right. If he passes that test, now we're now it's on. Okay. Uh, Jack Stoll, another guy who. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, was, it was open eyes. He's kind of been what we thought he would be, sort of a hybrid tight end, H-back type guy. And then Jack, your guy, Jack Driscoll, who's now getting some reps inside. The, 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 it's all important for these guys, no question about it. So back back to Jordan Howard for a sure. second. Something I learned from listening to Q&A that I did not realize and did not know 
is that you know how we always say how Jordan Howard kind of finds his way back to the Eagles, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No matter what he's been through, even last year when he looked like he was just reduced to nothing. Deuce Staley <laughs> apparently loves Jordan Howard, like huh. loves Jordan. Howard. Really thinks the world like really high. This is for, straight from Jason Avant's mouth, and Avant was on the coaching staff last year. Yeah, he said the reason, the big reason why Jordan Howard came back here after just a you know terrible usage and just basically doing nothing for the Dolphins is because of Deuce Deuce's respect for Jordan Howard and what Deuce thought Jordan Howard brought to the offense. I mean, granted, they brought him back to the practice squad, but that's because they already had their guys at that moment. Nonetheless, uh, it makes sense because Jordan Howard does excel at pass protect. He's good at pass pro, um, and that's something that Deuce Staley always you know, preaches in young running backs and likes out of young running backs. So, um, th- th- And plus, he's a, just a tough downhill runner, and that's the kind of runner that Deuce Staley was as well. But um, I didn't realize. I did not know that Deuce was such a proponent of Jordan Howard. And, you know, it must we know how the organization felt about Deuce and his words. So even though Deuce oh, yeah. is still here, it shows by them bringing Jordan Howard uh, back. I, what I would add is my understanding was this – they had put a list together of running backs available in free agency. Remember, we said we, we'd heard what they wanted to pay. It was just like around the veteran minimum or, or, or above it. And that eliminated a lot of the running backs for free agency. And it just – made sense for them uh, to bring him back because they. this is a guy that they know, obviously. Right. And I think you said the last show, he was humbled. He, he What did he say? Like, he wasn't even sure. He had no job offers. He, he thought he right. was done. Right. 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 So they signed him uh, prior to the draft. I think they signed him in April, mm-hmm. uh, a little bit later than you would think. But the fact of the matter, as I said before, he's only 26. He turns 27 in November, folks. So uh, he got himself in better shape. And uh, I would have I would argue that he's the biggest surprise to me in training camp. I I I, I rolled my eyes when they when when we put it on our show that we had heard they were going to bring him back. I was like, what? Why? Why? Right? Right? <laughs> but I tell you, Carry it on, was huh? like it had some kind of psychological impact on me because <laughs> really? I, I and I, I wrote we, you know Andrew Dicheco and I did this kind of uh, did this this preview training camp preview and then we yeah. tried to predict the winners of of certain battles. And one of them was running back too. And I predicted Jordan Howard. And the only reason I predicted it was because, well, the Eagles must see something in him that nobody else does. So I got to go with what I'm, you know, the Eagles clearly love him. So I'm going to say, hey, he's going to wind up winning this competition with Carry On Johnson and whoever because the, you know, he comes here and the Eagles love him. And it seems like right now he'd be RB2 unless anything changes. So, um, I'm, it, like I said, it had some weird, almost reverse psychology on me where I'm like, I, I don't know if this guy's got anything left in the tank, but the Eagles certainly think so. So I'm just going to I'm just going to follow their lead on. This oh, one. yeah. Look, I, I mean, you and I saw it. we were at camp and I was kind of, you know, we had, we put on our show that a uh, couple months ago that we had heard he looked good in OTAs. He lost weight, but we'll reserve judgment until the training camp. And he's actually been better right. um, now. That there's a. When I say hitting, there, there's thud, which is an elbow, a forearm. You know, you get physical with a guy. He yeah. squeezes the hole better, mm-hmm. um, doing much better at it. And now Boston Scott is looked damn good, by the way. He looks explosive. He does. Um, the way that they're using him is working is in, a, in a rotation behind Sanders. It, it, it works. And look, they'll both – Jordan Howard and Scott will have their roles. I mean, there might be some games where Scott has more touches than Howard because – Jordan Howard's not going to play on third down. He they don't throw him the ball. In fact, uh, I remember uh, someone of the Eagles coaching staff telling me that they never would design anything for him. It just the one year was it two years ago that was it the Buffalo game? Maybe he we he uh, played a little fullback. He was an up back, but yes. maybe he had a catch or two. Those were not designed plays. It was just that or the Green Bay game. Right, they were just checkdowns because nobody else was open. So right. Scott's Scott's got that role there. He's he's great as a changeup. But when you ask them, and they did, had to do it last year when Miles Sanders got hurt. Mm-hmm. We learned our we learned our response to when we said, "What's the Eagles' answer for backup running back?" It can't be Boston Scott to have 15 carries. He's just not effective at it. Indeed. All right. Uh, real quick on tight end because you mentioned Jack Stoll. You mentioned Tyree Jackson. Yeah. How much does Zach Ertz play? Mm. Is a big question. I mean, mm. you've already put your chips on the table. You've done things that I did not think we were going to see. You, you practiced him at all. I thought I didn't think we were going to see that. You practiced him in pads. Okay. I didn't think we were going to see that. So if you're trying to, sh- if this is all about a showcase, then first drive, see if you can get a couple of catches and get him out. I mean, you're already playing roulette here. So 
Do you just no? You have to play him. What kind of message does it send if you don't play him in the preseason game? No, but you have to you have to practice him every practice. You can't hold him out. I mean. You know, well, like could I mean Deshaun Watson doesn't practice every practice. Well, that this is this is the, we're talking about a thirty-nine million dollar per player who's got. Th- it's a little. It, I understand what you mean, is, but you're right. It's not apples to apples. But the point is, right. every time he practices, they risk an injury sure. that would cost them eight and a half million. Well, he would. It would have to be right. It would have to be a season-ending injury. But yeah, well, obviously, not saying. only that, yeah. you can't trade him if he gets hurt. If he, That's my point. If he suffers a bad yeah. injury, right? Yeah, it's it's a tough one. Yeah, I forgot to talk about him. Yeah, he. It's a tough one for the Eagles, man. No one expected that this that them to be in the situation now that they're in with him. But here we are. We're in August. Talk to me on August thirty first. Be still on the team. I, I can't imagine because basically, if you don't trade him by the thirty first, which is the initial fifty three, we call it the fluid mm-hmm. fifty three. There's no such thing as final fifty three. Right. Um, then you're talking about the trade deadline. Now, then, then you're talking about okay, only you only trade him if you're out of the playoffs. Sure. You know. Uh, and then I, I just I'm thinking about I can't I wonder I don't think he would want to play. It's one thing when you're in practice and you know no you're yeah. not getting hit and you're not tackling yeah. to the ground. This is a preseason game against a Steelers defense. It's always comes ready to play. Even in the preseason, Steelers always come ready to play. It's just how although they although I think they I think you're going to see some key players not play. Like Joe Hayden didn't play in the first game. Yeah. Um, is TJ Watt. Playing? I'm sorry. Is Devin Bush playing? Right. Well, he's come back from the ACL. I don't know. TJ Watt's up for a contract extension, a mega one. He'll be one of the highest paid defensive players in the league when it gets done. Yep. Uh, I don't know that he'll play. But you're right. No, it, it's it's a fascinating challenge for their offense because it is a, it's a 34 front. Uh, even their backups are good, particularly in the front seven. They're not they're not real good at corner, but it. I, I really look forward to seeing how Hurts does tonight. I understand it's preseason. Just, you know, just get into a rhythm – Mm-hmm. Uh, if he only plays a quarter, then that's it, and 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 feel good about it. And in fact, as you said earlier, I thought it's a great point. If it's let, let's say they're going to play him two series, and both are not good, I keep I I keep him into the second quarter until I see what I, I we need to see a little rhythm here, don't don't we? Need some good good play. Well, yeah, I mean, if he if he has two three three and outs, and then the Steelers take up a lot of that first quarter clock, yeah, and you're going into the second quarter, and your and your quarterback's only thrown like three passes, yeah, I, I would think. <laughs> there, then you probably would, but there's that, that that temptation of a coach to say, I don't know if I want to do this or not, but we'll have to see if Nick Nick Sirianni uh, coaches, you know, on the conservative side or the more liberal side when in a situation like that. <laughs> uh, let, let's let's just politics and football. No, I'm just yeah, six, of course. Uh, <laughs> right guard and left guard. Who do you think starts? That's a great. Guess. See, it's so hard to know this. I, I actually used to put this stuff out on Twitter about what I'm hearing who's going to play, but right. haven't done it in a while. Um, I'm very curious, as I said earlier, to see Driscoll. Driscoll's good. I, well, we know Brooks is not playing because he's not – and say Malo, they're not totally over their right. injuries. Right. So I would think it would be – well, you got – here's who you have. Here's who we're going to see tonight, okay? This, this is what I see. Mm-hmm. Herbig, Pryor, Driscoll. Your boy, Brett Toth. Opeta, Jiriga, Awushika, yeah, Pierce yeah. Bakker. By the way, if I could stop you really quickly, yeah. once Mylata and once Lane Johnson come out of the game, are they playing? Are they, they starting? I mean, I'm a, I shouldn't assume, but I I mean, Nick's heavy is playing his starters. Okay. So I assume those if those two guys start, it doesn't. All right, Kelsey's gonna play, huh? My point is this: whether they start and come out or just don't start at all, your drop off at offensive tackle. I mean, you're basically – you're going to have what? Casey uh, Tucker and, and Brett He's Toth out. out there? Tucker's hurt. Oh, yeah, Tucker's, Tucker's hurt. hurt. So you got Brett Toth and Matt Pryor at right tackle, Toth at left tackle. Like, what are they doing here? What what are we doing if, if That's Lane fair, Johnson right. and, and, and know, Dillard are put, out of the game? Right. You don't want to – you're exactly right. You don't want to put backups with a starting quarterback. That's a great point. Um, well, Driscoll can start. He's you, play, you, you would play Driscoll, right, at right tackle. Then you'd play, I guess, Pryor at right guard, and you'll play Herbig at center in that case if Kelsey's not going to play. Or Jariga. Yep. Or, or Jariga. Jariga. Maybe you'd play Jariga at center and Herbig at left guard, and Jesus, God, God knows who at left. But <laughs> Brett Toth at left tackle? Are you, tell, are you kidding me? <laughs> Man, jeez. What are we doing here? <laughs> all right, all right. Look, because um, I just don't want to. I'm telling you what, I'm getting Jalen Hurts out of the game if I don't have. I think Blaine Johnson and. and my lot of have to play just for the reasons I just all right. So, so let me ask you this Do you, I didn't think we were going to do this, but this is a great discussion and a good debate here. So, 
do you go two series with Mylotta and Lane Johnson and Kelsey? You know, obviously the other guys are Driscoll and you know Pryor, Herbig. Or a great question, man, you can't afford to get these guys hurt. <laughs> I know that's the thing I struggle with because you 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 brought up some really good points that I had not really considered. I wasn't really thinking. I was just looking about. I was more looking forward to seeing some guys play tonight. So it's a uh, boy. I think you <laughs> may have one. to give yourself two series of Mylotta that left tackle. You can mm-hmm. pull Lane after one series, but only if you're replacing him with Driscoll for mm-hmm. the second series. After that. Jalen, you're out. Once I got guys like Brett Toth yeah. and and uh, who else did we say? I left uh, Matt Pryor and mm-hmm. you know any other backup tackles in there. Sorry, everybody. That's you know fair we're enough. Going, we're we're, we're enough. running the ball now. Now <laughs> if Harry if Harry Kreider doesn't get in, I'm quitting. I'm never watching the Eagles oh, again. He is going to get it. He's going to get in quite <laughs> a lot in the second half. I don't know. I just the name. Some of these names, you know. Oh, you know. You're oh, okay. Before we get we'll get the defense. That's that. We'll close it out with second, defense, yeah. but. But it's really funny. So I'm, I'm in the Chicago airport, and they said um, Calvin Johnson or Calvin Joseph. And I said, wait a minute. Did he say Jorah Calvin? What Jorah is Calvin. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. And I never forget Merrill Reese, the great Merrill Reese, called him Calvin Jorick one time, on, you know, during a game. Mm-hmm. He cried. It, it just – because it's like – Honestly, how could you not make that mistake? I know. I know. Anyway, Kelvin. <laughs> All right, Adam, before we get to defense, everyone's favorite time of the year is right around the corner. College football season to celebrate DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top rated sportsbook app, is putting new players in the center of the action with $200 in free bets instantly if you bet $1 or more on any college football game. Take advantage of this limited time offer now. You heard it right. DraftKings giving all new players $200 in free bets instantly when you place a bet of $1 or more on any college football game, no matter what. So head to DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Check out all of the great promotions and daily odds boosts that they're offering. DraftKings Sportsbook is safe, secure, and reliable, located right here in the U.S. of A., so it's easy to deposit your and withdraw your money at your convenience. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use that promo code ITB to receive $200 in free bets when you place a dollar bet on any college football game. That's promo code ITB to get your free $200 in free bets instantly for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. You got to be 21 or older, Pennsylvania only, new customers only, restrictions apply in partnership with Meadows Racetrack and Casino. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Please call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right. Now now that we've like, – like that was a really good conversation about offensive tackle there. Now I'm extra fired up to see what, now, now what you've, Sirianni's got planned for uh, for the backups that night. You've got my mind warped now. I, I like um, in, in, in 10 hours, I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to get back from practice. So I'm going to like go through depth charts. I'm like, man, what would I do? What would I do? <laughs> so funny. I mean, defensively – See, it's funny. Sirianni said that there's no tape on their offense, so mm-hmm. nobody knows what they're going to do. Like we don't, we still don't know because Ertz is on the team. Um, if they're going to be more twelve or eleven personnel, we know that they basically run the most twelve personnel in the NFL other than the Browns because with Ertz on the team and Goddard, you have to. Right. But if they trade Ertz, they're going to be way more eleven than they have in recent years because they've got enough receivers. Then they could still be multiple. They could still do plenty of twelve because they've got. They'll have Stahl. They'll have Richard Rodgers, who did revive his career last year. He had some nice catches downfield. Yeah. But d- defensively, how, what do you think Gannon will do tonight? Do you think he'll pre-snap, post-snap disguise? He'd be vanilla. Don't do any of that. What do you think he'll do? I think he's going to be vanilla. I think he is. I really do. Um, I think a lot of that may, d- may also be factored in by the kind of level of quarterback play that they're going to see over the first six weeks of the season. We've talked about that. They're going to see Dak. They're going to see Matt Ryan. They're going to see Mahomes. They're going to see Brady. uh, They're going to see Justin Herbert. So I don't think they want to be showcasing a whole lot right now. And plus, you know, their defensive line is a veteran D line, right? I think, and we know that they're, they're not running the wide nine anymore, Adam. We know that they're going back to a more, more of a, I don't want to call it read and react because that, that's sort of a two gapping thing, but they're not doing that, but they are not going to just be flying at the quarterback. I think for the first game, 
Gannon's going to want them to focus on the fundamentals of stopping the run. Pittsburgh likes to run. So I think this will be a good opportunity to just kind of rein it all in. Let me see the fundamentals first. And then maybe as we go along, I can open it up with the twisting and the stunting and the blitzing and things like that. that that's what I would think. Who knows? They may come out. Who is it? Wasn't it the Packers that always come out blitzing like on every single play uh, when they had Petten as their uh, defensive guy? I, I, I can't was, remember which year it was. I don't think it was Petten, but no, you're right. there was somebody else. It was some year was, that all they did was blitz on every single play. The Ravens, yeah, did that it too was. Sometimes. There was some. You know, it's funny, and maybe our listeners would know this. Though people a little bit older, did Buddy Ryan blitz in the preseason? I swear he did. <laughs> he probably did. He, he probably, probably did. Blitzed right. Blitzed on the first day of camp. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, no, their def- their front is still read and react. My understanding is that's definitely what they do. Okay. You don't have to be a two gapper to read and react. It's just the that's way true. that the their front is moved. But um, the players that I'm looking for in this game, right? Milton Williams, absolutely. Um, who's had an up and down camp? Definitely. Uh, Joe Osman, who's played himself into a realist, having a realistic chance to play because they moved him to, to outside linebacker um, as a stand-up playing on the ball. It's absolutely what he's great at. Uh, the rookies, Teron Jackson, Patrick Johnson, and Zach McPherson. Here we go. We're finally going to see him play yep. in, in, in tackle football. <laughs> you what know, concept. Right. <laughs> we're going to see McPherson now. We're all uh, folks, all your eyes. I mean, if you if there's a defensive player you're looking forward to seeing, it's this guy because he had, he's had top 3 player in camp. He's been phenomenal. Craig James. Well, he's hurt. He's had a good camp. Not that people are like get, you know, on their seats to watch him and Michael Jaquette just because could he sort of revive his career? He's had a nondescript camp and then Josiah Scott has had this moment. Now, Craig James is hurt. So, I don't think he's going to oh, be yeah, playing. Oh, yeah, is he? Yeah, okay. I think he 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 actually. I think he's week to week too. I, 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 am I correct with that? I have to go look. I'm he might he might be. That, he was yeah, hurt before, James. but he wasn't on my latest list. But okay, even if he's not playing, Jaquette and uh, Josiah Scott, and then you know, as you said, you know, Davion Taylor not playing. That's a bummer mm-hmm. uh, for them. Uh, Rashad Smith is hurt. He's out. Uh, Jared Avery was working. He might be able to play. He he was back uh, from his – at least he was doing limited stuff. I don't know that he's been clear to play. They're actually – boy, they're – Alex Singleton should be playing because he was he, – he said he's physically fine. Here's here's my question. Mm-hmm. Well, in addition to Hassan Ridgeway and, and T.Y. McGill and, and Ray Clyde Williams and our guy Tui Pelotu, no one's heard anything about right. seeing those guys. But they're so down a linebacker in numbers, Sean Bradley uh, will, will, will play. But Stevens is out. Uh, Davion Taylor's out. Jordan Avery may not play because his injury. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Who do you play? It's a great question. By the way, Craig James was in a walking boot the last time. Oh, okay, they then he's so definitely I, not I playing. I would have okay. to think that he's definitely not playing. Yeah, he's not playing. Though. Yeah, not playing. yeah. No, I, you know, I think Alex Singleton's got to get a lot of run. I think you're gonna you get a lot. Alex Singleton and T.J. Edwards to me got to get a pretty decent amount of run uh, along with Eric Wilson at least to start. Um, and then, yeah, I mean. Again, you can't. This is a, you can't afford to get these guys hurt too much. So even though you'd like to get them as many reps, if they if they get injuries, then you're you're already hurt at that position with Stevens and and Davion Taylor out. So what are we talking about? You know, this <coughs> might be a good time though to to get some of those stand up rushers in as as linebackers. Then not obviously not Kerrigan who had the uh, thumb injury. We've got to talk about that, but he had surgery, so it looks like he'll be out. Uh, they said it was minor surgery. I think it's only going to be about a week or so that he's going to be out. I guess that Which, thumb was bugging him. Yeah, it's weird. Like he was, he was, he hurt the thumb. He was testing it out. I was actually there when he was testing it on practice, mm-hmm. and then a pra- and he practiced later. You know, in, in other practices, and I guess it just didn't get well. Yeah, they didn't. They kind of downplayed it, and then he uh, had it taken care of. So hopefully, uh, by the time the regular season is starting in four weeks, that he could play as many snaps as they intended him to play. But Osman, Osman's a run and chase. Mm-hmm. Um, blow up a play type guy. Um, you know, he was a big time pass rusher in college, but I mean that that it, it, based on the conference that he played in, this is a big step up for him. You know, right. playing in the National Football League, but he's a high energy guy. Coaches love him. Right. Uh, both staffs, the staff and the former staff. So we'll see what happens here. So, uh, and think, then a corner. Think, okay, go well, real quick. I just think after the first quarter, you're probably going to see a lot at linebacker um, in certain situations. You're going to see a lot of Sean Bradley. Yes, and you're probably going to see a decent amount of Rashad Smith and um, He's out. and the rookie. I'm not Rashad Smith. I mean the rookie, Patrick uh, Johnson. Patrick yeah. Johnson. 
I think those guys are going to get a lot of that second half second half run. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Uh, and then at, 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 in the secondary, well, with, I can't with imagine James Slay's going to play. You're right. I think I think McPherson and Jaquet are probably going to get a decent amount of run from the second to the third quarter. Don't you think? The guys that I think will play, Graylon Arnold is, is out. So the guys that I think you'll see in K- Kevon Wallace is out. So I would say here, here are your DBs, safety and corners. The guys who are going to play a lot or should play a lot. Marcus Epps, Andrew Adams. Yep. Uh, Elijah Riley. Lavert mm-hmm. Hill is still on the roster. He is still uh, on the roster. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Kevon Seymour, Jaquette. Avant, don't forget Avante Maddox. I think he'll probably oh, yeah. out there, be out there. As a well, I, I just didn't – yeah, I just – how much do you think he should play? Well, I mean, he, this is not a guy who's, you know – It's important, I don't though. Say, I know he's not fighting for a spot. He's going to be on the team. But, I mean, he's got to get he's reps starting on the slot? inside again. Yeah, I mean – Right, gotta, but he's just starting slot corner, right? He is a starting slot corner. But it's not like he's – um you know, Nikel Roby Coleman from two years ago, two or three years ago. He's not not one of the best slot corners in football just yet. yet. He's got to show it. Yeah. So I think I think he's going to play the first quarter, no less, right? I mean, he's at least going to give you a whole quarter. Then maybe you get Josiah Scott in there uh, for the second quarter at slot. And then in the second half, you might be able to get Josiah in there for second and third, and then okay. you, know, you finish it out with with some of your bottom row, like a Lavert Hill there in the third and the fourth. And then the other two things is you want to see Sipos, the punter, continue his really good training camp. Right. Um, if Jake Elliott is had an up and down camp, um, need to get a little bit more intel on him. Then the here here's the other thing. Uh, the last lastly, I I do believe it's going to wind up being. Rager is a punt returner, Gainwell is a kick returner, but that's not etched in stone yet. So it would be nice to see Gainwell uh, uh, return kicks, and then we, we don't want to see Greg Ward fair catch and stuff. I mean, they got they got to put someone back there who's dangerous, and um, mm-hmm. that would be Jalen Rager. All right, I'm going to have a question for you. Before that, I want to stop for a minute and just remind our friends to check out PHLSportsNation.com, enhancing the fans' experience with their coverage of all professional and even some college uh, Philadelphia sports teams. Make sure you look them, look for them on Twitter at PHL Sports Nation and find all their great work at PHLSportsNation.com. We'll pause real quick for another word from our great sponsors, including our friends at Sky Motor Cars. And if you stop into Sky Motor Cars, make sure out there in Westchester, PA, make sure you tell them Adam and Jeff sent you. You will get a great deal. Uh, I wanted to stop you there because you, you made a good point about Sipos, the punter. Um, Jake Elliott's had a pretty good camp. I wanted to focus on Jake Elliott for a second. He's had a pretty good camp. Um, I know he's, he did a lot of work this offseason, you know, like uh, working with coaches, mentality and everything, confidence. Uh, all reports so far, all indications when I've been there, he's been making his kicks. This is kind of a big preseason slash season for him. You, you, you want to make sure that this guy is right for this year because he really had a shaky year last year. Oh, for sure. Yeah, he. The, the way that we were told is that it it was less about him; it was more about the operation, the, the snap, the hold, and then the kick. If if the if the timing was off, it's going to throw the kicker off. It doesn't matter who it is, and that was the big thing for this coaching staff to to kind of correct. I mean, he might have had one day where he's four or six from field goals or something. Um, he, one of them might have been short area field goal. Now, again, I don't know whose whose fault it was. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the thing. Like, I don't know. I would have to ask. Um, but we suppose we heard has had a very, he, one of the biggest reasons why they, they only decided not to bring a punter in is because he had a good spring. Right. Which I think if you, if you would have looked at it in March, it was almost a certainty they would do that. But what they did is they did the smart thing instead of, they didn't need to put pressure on him. Let's see if he can do it. There are no games being played in the spring. If he doesn't do well, we'll, we'll bring a punter in. And they, there's some veterans out there that actually, there, there are a lot of like, Guys who haven't been in the league for three years are out there, and you know they're, they're getting try, they're getting workouts now. But um, you know, look, so far so good, and they've kind of uh, revamped their coaching staff here on, on that side. So uh, with Panunzio, a guy yep. from Alabama, who's I think he, he's, his background's not in special teams, but he's just a veteran assistant coach, and uh, Randy Brown's son Tyler, mm-hmm. and Michael Clay was here with uh, Chip Kelly, so. Um, lots of newness with this coaching staff. Yeah, and I, and I would think because of that, especially with the addition of of Tyler Brown, right, to really work on kicking, um, I think that that's something to watch in this game. You know, I know it's not sexy to talk about special teams, but 
given the issues that you just mentioned they had last year, not only with Elliott's kicking, but with the whole process from start to finish. New punter, which means new holder. Rick Lovato back. He's uh, you know, he's been a long snapper for a while now. This is this is something worth monitoring because if there are some missed kicks in this game, you're gonna start to wonder what's going on again. So, but there on the other side, if Elliott makes two or three kicks and and everything's good, you start to feel better about that process and about this year because they're going to need him this year. I agree. Look, I agree. This is I, – I can't believe how much time we put into the preseason game. <laughs> but it's fascinating because well, we you do. have one 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 fewer game. Mm-hmm. You, you, you have these two um, joint practice sets, back-to-back weeks, which are kind of mini preseason games. So – it's a, kind of an interesting challenge uh, for the coaches. I'm fascinated to see who winds up playing tonight. Uh, and you'll be at the game. I look forward to seeing. Uh, in fact, well, could you live tweet warm-ups if you get there early enough? I want to be curious if some of these guys don't dress. You yes, know? I will do my best to do that for you <laughs> and for our yes. audience. Absolutely. And if Harry Kreider doesn't play, let me know because I won't watch. Well, then we may have to do an emergency ITB after the game if Harry Kreider doesn't play. <laughs> I don't know what it's just the name. I don't know. It's just a name. It is. It doesn't sound like a football name. I tell no. you, that. Harry Kreider. No, it sounds like a bartender. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for this episode of Inside the Birds, the leading podcast in Eagles Intel. Big thanks as always to Hunter Brody, our producer. Check out his work on YouTube. It's called Sports Talk with Broads. Check out his website broadsmedia.com look for him on twitter at broads81 and as always we thank you for flying with us inside the bird